Hey, and welcome to the Law Tours Interdimensional Space Pod. Your home to tours through the law behind some of your favourite characters and events in the multiverse. Now it looks like your flight today is to Earth 616 to learn more about the supervillain known as Carnage. Really? You must be crazy in a new look. Well, it looks like your flight's now boarding. You better get to your departure gate quickly. Captain Rick is awfully nervous about this flight. Good luck. Welcome aboard, everyone. This is your captain speaking. We're just about ready to depart today on our flight to Earth 616. I'd like to take a quick minute to thank you for participating in our extra security checks today. We must ensure that no symbiotes make it aboard this flight. I'd also ask you to keep your seatbelt fastened at all times today, just in case we need to make a hasty exit later on. Initiating warp drive in 3, 2, 1. Right folks, let's get this over with quickly. This guy gives me the creeps and I don't want to stay here one moment longer than we have to. Never before has such a depraved individual been given such a prime opportunity to unleash their evil desires on the world. That was until the notorious serial killer, Cletus Cassidy, bonded with a powerful alien symbiote to become the dastardly supervillain, Carnage. Cletus Cassidy was born in the Ravencroft Institute for the Criminally Insane to a patient at that very hospital. His mother would die shortly after childbirth signalling the start of the child's very tragic upbringing. Cletus would go on to spend time in the care of his abusive grandmother, but when she was secretly murdered by the young Cletus, he entered the custody of his father Roscoe and new stepmother Louise. Roscoe would later be arrested and executed for killing Louise whilst fighting with his son. The now orphaned Cletus would be sent to St Estes Home for Boys, where he would face extreme bullying from both staff and other children. It was Cletus who would have the last laugh, however, when he burnt down St Estes's and murdered all those who had tormented him during his time there. These early murders paved the way to Cletus becoming a fully-fledged cannibalistic serial killer who would eventually be sentenced to 11 consecutive terms at Rikers Island Prison. However, it is within the confines of this prison that Cletus was given the ultimate chance to unleash his horrific desires on the world. During his time at Rikers, Cletus was cellmates with another prisoner named Eddie Brock, better known as the supervillain Venom. Brock had in the past been bonded to an extraterrestrial parasite known as a symbiote. Symbiotes are part of an alien race known as the Clinta, fully sentient amorphous beings that could form a parasitic bond with a host, granting the host immense power and also influencing their mind. Cletus did not believe Brock's claims to being Venom, however, and when Brock did not convert to Cletus's homicidal view of life, Cletus decided to kill him. Before he could do so, however, the Venom symbiote reunited and bonded with Brock, allowing him to launch a chaotic prison break. Unknown to Brock, however, was the knowledge that his symbiote was pregnant and gave birth during this rescue. The symbiote child entered Cletus's bloodstream through a cut and bonded with him. Now granted immense power, Cletus dubbed himself Carnage and embarked on a bloody killing spree across New York. Whilst on this rampage, Carnage was confronted by the superhero Spider-Man. The bloodthirsty Carnage was too powerful for Spidey, however, and Spider-Man resorted to seeking the help of the Fantastic Four and his archenemy Venom to defeat Carnage and seemingly destroy the Carnage symbiote. Now housed safely back in his birthplace of the Ravencroft Institute, Cassidy was forever destined to become a sadistic and ruthless individual with an unquenchable bloodlust. This was due to Cletus's 17th century ancestor, Cortland Cassidy, tainting the Cassidy bloodline after bonding with a symbiote and going on a bloody killing spree in colonial era America. Cletus's special blend of nihilism and hatred was only strengthened by the years of abuse he faced at the hands of his family and other children growing up. As a result of his love for murder and chaos, Cletus found it very hard to maintain friendships, mainly due to him attempting to kill most of his friends once he grew tired of them. In fact, Cletus maintained genuine affection for only two beings, one of those being the Carnage symbiote, who he often referred to as his missus. The other being was a superpowered criminal known as Shriek. 
Cletus met Shriek during a prison break from Ravencroft. This particular prison break came about when a scientist experimenting on Cletus awakened the Carnage symbiote laying dormant within him whilst extracting his blood. The ensuing mayhem led to Carnage and Shriek attempting to take over New York, and they almost succeeded when Shriek used her psychic channel powers to turn the once normal citizens of Manhattan into murderous maniacs. Sometime later, during a battle with Venom, the Carnage symbiote gave birth to its own symbiote child, known as Toxin. Scared and weakened by this birth, Carnage decided to kill the new symbiote, but despite his best efforts, Toxin bonded with a New York City police officer and went on to become a hero, much to the dismay of its villainous parental symbiote. Whilst participating in a breakout attempt at a supermax prison known as The Raft, Carnage was seized by the immensely powerful hero known as The Sentry. Carnage would then be flown into the Earth's atmosphere and ripped in two. However, this would not kill Cletus due to the symbiote placing his body into a dormant state. After being recovered by an industrialist named Michael Hall, the Carnage symbiote was separated from Cletus and experimented on in an attempt to monetize the symbiote's powers. These attempts resulted in the creation of symbiote-powered prosthetic limbs and exosuit-clad heroes known as the Iron Rangers. The Iron Rangers did not last long, however, as now reunited with its host, the Carnage symbiote informed Cletus of a new ability it had developed the ability to control offshoots of itself. This led to the symbiote-powered Iron Rangers being consumed alive by Carnage, transforming him into a hulking biomechanical creature in the process. Sometime later, during a mission to the mutant island of Genosha, Cletus was caught in an inversion spell that turned his moral alignment from evil to good. This led to a brief stint for Carnage as a misguided anti-hero, ending in him risking his own life to save billions by wrapping the symbiote around a gene bomb containing the explosion. This would be the last time Cletus would use the Carnage symbiote's powers for a good cause. But what exactly were these powers? Due to the Carnage symbiote's progenitor initially bonding with Spider-Man, Carnage's powers resembled those of the web-slinging hero. He was able to swing from buildings using biomass tendrils, withstand great amounts of damage, sense oncoming danger, and lift over 80 tons in weight. Unlike both Spider-Man and Venom, however, Carnage also had the ability to turn his body into bladed weapons and claws, which he wielded to deadly effect. Partially due to his immense bloodlust, Carnage's strength and abilities far exceeded both Spider-Man and Venom combined. This immense strength could not stop a once again villainous Cletus from being stripped of his symbiote and sent back to Ravencroft, however. When the Poisons, a group of interdimensional creatures who consumed symbiotes, invaded Earth, Cletus was brought to their ship and tricked into bonding with a new symbiote. This symbiote, now bonded with Cletus, would then be consumed in an attempt to turn Cletus into a poison-controlled weapon known as Poison Carnage. These creatures underestimated Cletus's psyche, however, as he resisted regained control of his body, and later launched an attack on the poison ship. This attack would see Carnage flung out into the void of space. The crystalline poison Carnage exoskeleton fell away, but as Cletus re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, traces of the original Carnage symbiote within his blood attempted to save Cletus. It was no use, however, as the symbiote was destroyed on atmospheric re-entry, and Cletus died crashing into the desert. Whilst his body was being transported by the authorities, it was intercepted by the Cult of Null, an ancient cult dedicated to the worship of Null, god of darkness and original creator of the symbiote Clintar race. The cult, which was led by another of the Carnage symbiote's children named Scorm, would bond Cletus's body to a fragment of the primordial Grendel symbiote, a giant symbiote dragon thought to be one of Null's earliest creations. Cletus's body was reanimated by the fragment of Grendel symbiote in an attempt by the cult to turn Cletus into Null's new vessel in the physical world. Not one to be controlled, Cletus would resist this attempt to take over his body and broke his connection to Null by ripping out Scorn's spine and consuming her codex. The trace remnants of symbiote biomass 
that is left within a host body after bonding. Now in full control of a carnagized Grendel symbiote, Cletus set out to free Noel from his centuries long imprisonment at the core of the Clintar homeworld. To do this, he would need to re-establish his connection to Noel by hunting down and consuming every codex he could find from previous and current symbiote hosts. With every codex he consumed, Cletus's power grew until he evolved into a being known as Dark Carnage, a 13 foot tall skeletal monstrous version of the Carnage symbiote, far more powerful than any other symbiote in existence. Whilst hunting for codexes in New York, Cletus, disguised as Eddie Brock, infiltrated a warehouse where Spider-Man and other ex-symbiote hosts were using a machine called the Scythe to safely remove their codexes. However, when the real Eddie Brock arrived at the warehouse, a battle would ensue that would see the Venom symbiote bond to Bruce Banner, creating a Venomized Hulk. Despite Venom Hulk's immense strength, he was no match for Dark Carnage, and the Venom symbiote was finally consumed by its own child, evolving it into an even more powerful incarnation of Dark Carnage, sprouting demonic wings and horns. Dark Carnage was now powerful enough to break Null free, such a desperate situation drove Eddie Brock to merge with all the codexes harvested by the Scythe machine, creating a powerful copy of his Venom symbiote. The fight between Carnage and Venom would see Cletus threaten Eddie Brock's young son Dylan. This would lead to an enraged Eddie Brock cutting Cletus in half and consuming the Dark Carnage symbiote, unintentionally freeing Null in the process. So where does that leave us now? Well, if there's one thing we've learned about Cletus Cassidy, it's that he does not stay dead for long. And while his physical form may have perished, his consciousness survived within the symbiote hive mind. Despite no longer having a body, Cletus managed to seize control of and pilot the Dark Carnage symbiote, going on to cause havoc from beyond the grave by bonding with a xenophobic senator named Peter Crane and manipulating other symbiotes, ready for his chance to spread chaos and carnage throughout the world. But I can't lie to you folks, I'm glad our trip here to Earth 616 is over and we can get back to the safety of our spaceport. We'd like to thank you for choosing to fly with Lord Tours today. We understand you have many other great options available to you, so we appreciate you choosing to fly with us and we hope to have you on board again soon. If you enjoyed your flight with us today, please let us know by clicking the like button down below. And make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next thrilling adventure. Catch you next time.